I uh, mentioned this in a previous video, but uh, I forgot to mention this. Um, on Jacob's ladder, I wonder if the Lord had reference to DNA. I mean, after all, God made his covenant with Abraham, confirmed it with Isaac, and then confirmed it with Jacob Israel. Ishmael and Esau were rejected. So, something to think about. All right. Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Genesis chapter 28. This is going to be the continuation of the Dreams and Visions series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to put this Genesis 28 on two different playlists. So even though it gets loaded twice, it's the same material. Uh, it's just that YouTube does not like one video sharing two different playlists. I don't know why. But I'm going to post this on the Genesis playlist. And I'm also going to post another copy renamed on the Dreams and Visions playlist. So it's the same material, you know, no sense in watching it twice unless, you know, you want to watch it twice, which is fine, whatever. But just to let you know, and I'm going to do that for uh, everything for Genesis. So uh, keep in mind that when we did um, the last video on the dreams and visions about Abimelech and Abraham, now God promised Abraham he'd make him the father of many nations. And one little country over in the Middle East is not many. Unless, of course, you're a demon nominational uh, false prophet, you know, then you could say, well, you know, one's many. Yeah. But uh, Abraham had a son named Isaac. And then Isaac had two sons, Jacob, whose name was changed by the Lord himself to Israel, which means rules with God or prince with God. And his other son was Esau, who married into the Canaanite Hittite bloodline, and uh, God was not very pleased with him. Uh, matter of fact, read Malachi chapter 1. God tells you just how he feels about Esau. He says he hated Esau. And of course, the black Hebrews will tell you that uh, white people that built the churches and printed the Bibles and sent missionaries all over the world that were Esau. He, I just, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, they have their opinion and I have mine. But uh, my Bible says to live peaceably with all men. And their uh, Bible says kill all the whites. So, at least some of them say that. So, I don't know. Do I hate anybody because of their skin color? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Can't say the same thing about uh, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. All right, so Genesis 28, verse 1. And Isaac, remember, Isaac's the uh, son of Abraham. And Isaac called Jacob. So Jacob, Jacob Israel would be Abraham's grandson. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Don't marry those Canaanites. They're the bad seed. So, verse 2. Arose, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence, of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. 
And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Um, the word Laban in Hebrew means, uh, believe it or not, it means white. So, all right. Uh, All right, so, in verse 5 again, And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanadaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, Jacob's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanadaram, to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Well, Esau didn't pay attention to that. He married a Hittite woman. So, actually two of them. Verse 7. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram, and Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau in unto Ishmael. Ishmael. Now, according to the Arabs, Ishmael is the father of many of the Arabs. And I absolutely believe this. I actually did a Bible study on the Arabs in Bible prophecy. And people will, uh, some of these denominational preachers will say, oh, well, that's not true. But if you look at the prophecies that God told Abraham about Ishmael, the only group of people that fulfill those prophecies are the Arabs. So, if you're interested, you can take a look at uh, the Arab world in Bible prophecy, or Ishmael. And uh, the Lord blessed Ishmael for Abraham's sake. But he said, but the Lord said to Abraham, that in Isaac, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Ishmael was not to be the chosen seed. God blessed Ishmael for Abraham's sake, but Isaac was to be the chosen seed line. Very important. Verse 9. Then went Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. So here it is, you've got a merging of Esau and Ishmael. Now I strongly suspect that the Saudi royal family is of this line. And, you know, I kind of wonder... Did Ishmael have his children and grandchildren go to Esau to get uh, wives and husbands from them? Just like Esau went to Ishmael to get a daughter, you know, for a wife. Did they marry each other's sons and daughters down the line? I, I, I know it's possible. I don't recall anything in the Bible that 
absolutely records this. Maybe there's something in the extra biblical sor uh, sources, such as the Book of Jubilees. I don't know offhand. It's been a long time since I've read the Book of Jubilees. Uh, there's a couple of extra biblical books that I've read. Um, and that was one of them, which I kind of suspect it's history. But if anybody knows, uh, you know, leave a comment. I'd be interested. You know, I'm a try to be a researcher. So, so Esau married one of Ishmael's daughters. Verse ten. And Jacob went out from Beersheba. Beersheba. I wonder if it was Budweiser, right? And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. I know, that's a very poor joke. Very poor joke. I'm sorry. Verse 11. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Uh, a very interesting thing here. He took stones from this place. Um, personally, I prefer a feather, a feather pillow. I always love feather pillows. Mom and Dad got me one when I was a kid. I always love feather pillows. Did I tell you I love feather pillows? Yeah. Um, can you imagine put, sleeping on a, a stone, a rock? I mean, really? But... Um, there's an interesting legend. I don't know how true it is. Makes for an interesting story. But um, there's a legend in, in, uh, in the United Kingdom about the Stone of Scone, S-C-O-N-E. Some people call it the Stone of Destiny, Jacob's Pillar Stone about how that uh, they carry it around. Some scholar, Bible scholars, say that this that was the stone that Moses struck to get water from the rock. I don't know if that's true, but uh, according to some legends, the prophet Jeremiah took, uh, I think, two daughters of the, house, the royal house of Judah, princesses. One of them was Tia Tifa, T-E-A, second word, T-E-P-H-I. And they went to, uh, I believe, according to legend, uh, they followed Jeremiah, went to Egypt, and then from there went to Ireland. And from there, the stone ended up in Scotland, and then ended up in England, where it is currently the coronation stone. I don't know if that's true, uh, but you know what? England gave us the King James Bible. The absolute, as far as I'm concerned, the absolute standard for the English-speaking world. I mean, it is a work of art. And... It, the Bible interprets the Bible with the King James. And even the chapter and verse numbering system has, I, I notice a lot of, um, I don't know exactly the word, but certain things happen on certain numbers. Uh, good things on good numbers and bad things on bad numbers. Like 11 and 13 are bad numbers. Um, 1, 3, 7, 10, 12, 24, 40, those are good numbers, and things happen. And when you look at the chapters and verse divisions in the Bible, there's some interesting things when you start paying attention to those numbers. Uh, six is another number, I don't know, you know, 666, but man was created on the sixth day. So, I don't know, just... I think the King James was divinely inspired. What can I tell you? If I'm wrong, the Lord will correct me one day. 
So, but until that time, but um, is it true about the coronation stone? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, I would believe the uh, Europe and the United Kingdom are descended from Israel more so than I would believe the demon nominational churches and that little antichrist country over in the Middle East being Israel. What can I tell you? All right, so. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Verse 12, here's the dream. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Uh, maybe these were angels that didn't have wings. I don't know. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. Wow! What's east? Greece. What's west? England, America. What's north? Europe. And what's south? South Africa. North, east, south, and west. And in thee shall, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Um, how have the Antichrist in the Middle East blessed the earth? How have the black Hebrews blessed the earth? Who gave the world civilization? Who built water plants? Who built sewage treatment plants? Who built airplanes, automobiles, modern drugs, penicillin, Sir Alexander Fleming? Who invented modern agricultural machines. Who feeds the world? Well, at least in the past. Who's been, you know, when there was a natural disaster over in a third world country, who flew tons and tons of food and supplies like the flood in Bangladesh back in the 70s? Yeah, I'm sure there was an ulterior motive to it. There always is. But who's been a blessing? Who? What group of people have been a blessing? And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold... I am with thee. Now this is the Lord speaking. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place. There is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Now what is oil uh, representative of? Well, in the New Testament, and in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, but they used to anoint kings with oil. 
as a symbol of God's blessing upon them and leadership, I suppose, you know, being led of the Lord. And he called the name of that place Bethel. Do you know what the word Bethel means? When you hear somebody named Beth, it means house. And El is a contraction for God. Basically means house of God. Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. That's probably what the Canaanites called it. I don't know. That's just a guess. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in his way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, uh, raiment's just an Old Testament, an old English word that means clothing. Verse 21, And raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. What's a tenth? It's a tithe. That's the tithe. So here it is. Jacob Israel hasn't even had uh, his son Levi, the Le Levitical priesthood, the Levites, and he's already promised to give the tithe to the Lord. So, all right, well, this is the uh, pretty much the end of this particular dream of Jacob. But uh, something you should consider. Jacob saw a ladder to heaven, and angels ascending and descending. What did they do in the Tower of Babel, or Babel? Weren't they trying to build a stairway to heaven, basically a tower to heaven? Yeah. When you look at all the pyramids in the earth, what were they for? I mean, you know, the flood of Noah destroyed probably, I, I suspect they were built, the pyramids were built before the flood, at least the big ones, the major ones. They're found all over the world. They're in South America. They're in Mexico. There's one in, uh, a number of them in Illinois. Um, they're dirt. And they're huge. Uh, the, you know about the one in Egypt, I'm sure. The largest pyramid in the world, which is like two or three times larger than the one in Egypt, is in China. They didn't even discover it until World War II when a plane was flying over China. I think it's in the desert. And um, and then after World War II, they were going to investigate it, but then the communists took over, and the communists, uh, from what I understand, don't want anybody looking into this pyramid. Thing is huge. It's the largest one in the world that they're aware of. Uh, who were the people building these pyramids? Uh, and it's, honestly, I think they were uh, places of worship for the fallen angels and that the fallen angels technology was being used to build these things. Uh, but that's just, you know, my opinion. We don't know. I mean, there's a stone in uh, uh, Lebanon called Baalbek, B-A-A-L-B-E-K. The thing, the, this stone weighs about twelve to 1,300 tons. 1,200, 1,300 tons. Um, they don't even have a mobile crane that I know of that can lift that. They've got fixed cranes that could lift that. But how in the world did they carve this stone um, and then move it and one stone is placed on a on a building. Look up Baalbek, Lebanon. And uh, there's one of the stones that were uh, didn't make it to where they were trying to send it. I suspect the flood stopped that. 
you know, how in the, you know, they want you to think that these people used vine ropes and uh, logs and rolled a 1,200 ton stone and then lifted it up six feet and put it on a, on a wall. Really? Uh, you know, the, the fallen angels, I suspect, before the flood were uh, doing all kinds of weird stuff. So I think they were trying to build their stairway to heaven. You know, they were cast out of heaven. The Bible records that Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven. And I think they were trying to uh, con convince mankind that would follow them into building their stairway to heaven. Thank you, Led Zeppelin. But... Uh, I don't know. You see, they always try to counterfeit what God does. God had a ladder. They had a pyramid stairway. Yeah, look up pyramids if you're interested. Very, very interested. Uh, very, very interesting. So, I don't know. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. God the Father... And his only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.